Pilot's webinar is regarding leveraging Piler optimization reports. It addresses the issue of blindly compiling something without really knowing what was done underneath the hood. Um, so we're familiar with, probably familiar with the basic optimization levels. These are the high level optimizations that you normally apply. Um, O2 is usually the default. Um, and in some cases, if there's problems with the code, it won't build. You probably try to disable the optimizations and see if that helps, or you try higher optimizations if you want to find out if you can get additional performance out of the code. Um, with O3, and there's yet more aggressive optimizations, um, which if you know what you're doing with your code or familiar with the data, then you can you can try those as well, O fast and fast. These are the uh, these optimizations all apply to the Intel compiler, C and Fortran. And at the bottom of this page is a link to uh, to the page from Intel that documents these. I've taken a bit of a subset of them and sort of the theme throughout the the webinar. Um, because the issue is that um, when you're working with optimizations, there's a lot of them, and it's if you're dealing with either Intel or GCC or both, it gets a little tricky to keep track of all the information and where to find it. So I'd say a big part of this webinar is, is navigating the optimizations and how to use those in conjunction with generating the reports. All right, so next we'll look at the optimization levels for the GCC compiler. And on the command line, you'd issue GCC, G++, and G Fortran. These all apply. Um, when you issue one of these optimizations, it turns on, it enables or disables um, a lot of optimizations. And with GCC, you can check if you're curious which ones that are being enabled depending on the level of optimization. So if you're looking at some loops, loop optimizations that are being applied by minus O2, for instance, if you grep on enabled, then you'll find that there's just F align loops is enabled. Um, now if you if you load if you do the same thing with minus O3, you'll find that only two loop optimizations are enabled. Those are indicated by GCC 5.4 in the brackets because the default GCC on the clusters um, to be aware of is an older GCC. <clears throat> so if you're compiling a production code for real, you want to use some more recent GCC. And that shows up, that's demonstrated here um, because if, I, if you load the latest GCC 9.1.0, you'll find that there's now five optimizations enabled that will be applied to your code if you use minus O3. So you need to keep that in mind all the time that the most the more recent versions of these compilers, and it goes for Intel as well, <coughs> gives you more optimizations, more powerful optimizations, and you know, presumably better code performance. So when you're debugging, I'm just going to say some words with GCC and Intel regarding debugging. Um, yes, you can use minus G with the minus O options. Um, but if you don't apply, if you don't specify a minus O option and you get the default of 2, but then you turn on minus G, then you're going to get minus O0. So that's probably not optimal if you're trying to um, optimize uh, find a bug related to the optimization in your code if you've then disabled everything. So um, it's recommended to use a certain optimization level that's compatible with minus OG. It gives you a moderate level of optimization called minus OG. 
and work with that is you try to debug your code. So you compile it with minus G and minus OG. And what it does is it enables the minus O1 flags that are compatible with, uh, with debugging. And if you again return to that example, which I did to pull out what's enabled or not in GCC, then you can see that when you compile with OG, you get fewer enabled optimizations. So I've, I've just done a grep on enabled again, and then um, counted the number of, of enabled items that are returned. And I got 74 with OG. So compared to minus 01, you can see that some of them have indeed been disabled. So that's useful to keep in mind. And there's some Regarding these optimizations, information for these opti this minus OG optimization, you can refer to the links at the bottom of that slide. Um, another, another thing to keep in mind, as I mentioned, you need to synchronize the documentation version that you're looking at with the compiler that you're using on the system. Otherwise, you know, the options are quite dynamic, as I mentioned, and you might be reading documentation about options that don't exist in the compiler, or you think they're there and they're not there. So the um, best way to do it is, yes, you can look online at the documentation. This will generally give you the latest version of the compiler that's been released. But if you're working with an older one, then once you get the module loaded on the cluster, you can use the man page, and that will give you the uh, correct optimizations corresponding to the version of GCC that you're using on the system. And I put in brackets there at the bottom, slash options control optimization, because once you pull up man GCC, while wow, there's a huge, you know, mile long list of things and searching through that is a little bit tricky. So I've saved the time. If you go slash options that control optimization, it will jump right down to that section of the man page where you can find everything. So the same sort of thing happens with the Intel compiler. Um, Intel allows the use of minus G with minus O options. Um, and it's, if you just put minus G, yes, here again, it's going to set minus O zero unless one of the others are specified. Intel goes another step, and they recommend if you're going to use these higher level optimizations over O zero, then you should be adding debug extended to prevent potential problems being created by this process itself, which could be a little frustrating if you know, you've, you're trying to debug something and you've generated um, some problems in the process. So add that minus debug extended if you're going to be having higher levels of optimization. Side note that Intel adds debug inline, debug info by default, O2 and O3. Um, okay, so that just that hand, that takes care of it itself. So you don't need to do the, anything there. And again, at the bottom of the slide is reference to the latest um, documentation on the internet from Intel regarding the optimizations. Or if you want to pull up the ones for the version that you're using, in fact, the version of Intel in the cluster, the default environment of Compute Canada is using 2016. Um, Intel compiler, whereas that uh, link there will be in regards to 2019. So you'll find that, um, so you should be referring to either the demand page for ICC, again, you can search to the section using that slash code optimization, or another handy way to do it, it creates nicer, some slightly nicer output, is run ICC-help, and if you direct that to a file, you can then open it in the editor and search on just optimization, and it'll take you to the section that's discussing all these optimization parameters. Okay, so with that out of the way, on to the more interesting topic of the webinar is optimization reports. And first, we'll discuss the Intel compiler. So there are different options to be aware of 
if you want to generate optimization reports. And there's a primary option, which is the first one, which can be used standalone. If you just put that, you don't need to put the equals n to any number. Of course, anything in square brackets on these slides means optional. So when you compile with ICC, you can just put minus q report, and it will generate the optimization report with the default um, level of de detail of 2. Uh, so this n value goes from 1 to 5, actually 0 with nothing output, but 1 to 5 in, is, increases the level of detail that's output to the report. You can direct the output, the report, to a file name or standard out or standard error with the next QOPT report file option, but you don't need to put that. Um, if you don't, generally, probably won't because it's extra typing. It's just going to write, you're going to, when you run the report, you won't see anything output other than a message telling you that it's written to a file with extension opt report. Um, so now you can get more control over what's being output with the Q opt report phase option. And you can give it a list or you can, um, if, if uh, a, a list of values as shown, and these can be mixed together, or you can put one or just put all to get them all, um, which is indeed the default setting for Q report at the top, as I mentioned. So these are called phases. So this is some new terminology to get familiar with. As far as the Intel compiler goes, when talking about optimization reports, is phase. So we've got um, CG, IPO, loop, OpenMP, R, PGO, T-collect, BEC, and all. And you can guess some of those probably. And on the next slide, I'll provide the definition of each one of them. But just for simplicity and keep everything concise on this slide, those are the ones that you can put for a list in um, separated fashion. Um, now, if you run the compiler with QOPT report help, it will dump a very detailed description, um, much better than what's here in the slides, of all the different levels and phases that it does. Um, so that, that can give you, again, something that's synchronized with the version of the compiler that you're using on your command line, so you don't need to go hunting around um, on the internet to find the information. Now, just a quick example at the bottom. You're probably wondering, how do I make use of all this information? So when you compile your program, you just add the options I mentioned above. And I've just given a little example there, of setting it to five, which is the most detail. And two phases are specified, IPO and VEC. So only information for those phases will be output to the report. And at the bottom is a link to the Intel site, which discusses this in more detail. They've got good information. I said I provide the, the definitions of the phases, and here they are. So IPO is interprocedural optimization. Loop is loop nest optimization. OpenMP is the open OpenMP optimizations, and PAR is auto parallelization, PGO, profile guided optimization, VEC, of course, vectorization, and there's a couple of others um, at the bottom there, too. Now, this, this whole thing repeats itself for GCC compiler. Very similar fashion, but there's a different switch name that you, you apply called fopt info. Um, but like the pre like Intel, you can add to it the different options. They call it options here instead of phases. Well, in fact, phases don't really apply here because they're part of the options. So everything's called an option that you can do here. And they found a way to sort of put everything together on the command line. 
Um, so they break it down. There's different types, the different types of options that you can give to FOPT info. There's three types. There's the kinds of messages, the output, whether it's optimized, whether it was missed, or a lot of detail for what was done, or all of them. And this option, which you probably don't need to worry about, is internals for additional uh, details that will only be useful to the developers of this software. And then, like the phases, the included optimizations that GCC make available is IPA, which is analogous to IPO for Intel, Loop, Inline, OMP, Vect, and then all of them. So if, if you don't put anything for the options, you get optimized opt all. So the kind of messages that it gives are the optimized ones, and then it, it outputs all of the included optimizations. That's the default setting. And again, I'll describe those um, optimizations in the next slide in details. And there's an example of how you run the compiler to generate an optimization report with the GCC compiler. So I've assumed level of 03 optimization fairly aggressive. And I want to look at those optimizations that exceeded for IPA and VEC. So the optimization reports for GCC compiler, these are the definitions of all the optimizations that I mentioned, the three categories lumped together on one page. Um, so optimize is going to show everything that was successfully optimized. Missed, again, it's those that were missed. You could only look at those or verbose information about the optimizations. And again, at the bottom, you've got IPA for interprocedural optimizations, loop optimizations, inlining optimizations, OMP optimizations, vector optimizations, vectorization optimizations, or all of them. So there's other things that you can do. This is where it actually starts to get more interesting. Other things that you can do to improve your code. And these are to tell the compiler to do things other than minus 0, 1, 2, 3, fast, whatever. So you could have an OpenMP code you've tried to um, put in pragmas for OpenMP into your code to paralyze it make it threaded. And you can apply this um, switch QOpenMP for the Intel compiler, and it will apply those that type of parallelization to your code. Um, then if you want to get a report, well, I'll just keep going down the list. So similar, you can tell the compiler to try to do all that OpenMP business itself instead of you going through and putting in the pragmas with the minus parallel option. And so that will try to take the code as it is written in serial and convert it to multi-threaded code to then run in parallel on the server. So you would want to know, you can clearly see that now you'd want to know how well did that go. So you'd probably start thinking, hmm, if I'm going to use that option, I want to generate the report. And then you start thinking back through the slides, and you remember, yeah, there was a report you could generate with a parallel option. So it would show you um, those type of optimizations that were achieved in the auto parallelization phase um, when the compiler ran, or maybe those that were missed, or all of them and so forth. Um, so next, there's vectorization in the code. So there's the notion of auto vectorization that's 
it's done sort of implicitly with SMD by Intel um, higher level options, minus O2 and above, that are applied to a code. You can also instrument your program to assist it with that vectorization or explicitly add directives, that's a little bit more advanced, to tell it to apply this vectorization, in which case it will do what it's generally told. Um, it, decisions are made by the compiler, so you need to sort of be aware of, cognizant of that. <clears throat> okay, so that's sort of vectorization, and with those types of vectorizations, again, you want to look at how well the compiler did vectorizing the code, depending which method you use. Uh, okay, so the next, and there is the vec option for that, as you remember. So there's other more advanced, well, possibly more appropriate types of optimizations for your code. So the PGO type of optimization, profile guided optimization, <coughs> which is a three-step process. So you generate a instrumented code, you run it with the input data, and then it generates an optim. Then you recompile it again for a second time with this prof u switch, and it generates uh, a dynamically optimized binary based on the runtime data that you did with the test using the prof gen um, binary. Um, again, so you want to check how well this went. So you're going to you go back a couple of slides and you realize that there was the PGO option to generate a report for that. So when you turns out that when you run the prof u step, which is the last step, that's when you apply the um, optimization report PGO option to look to see how that went. It's not the first one, it is the, the actual running that you do. So there's just simply not enough time to, to go beyond the detail here into this, but just to be aware of that. And if be aware of the type of code that you have, which optimization that you should be spending time to see if there's going to be benefits with. Um, all right, then there's another type of optimization to uh, improve performance of the code and IPO. So this will, this is more of a static analysis compared to the PGO and it will allow functions to be optimized across source files. Otherwise, when you're compiling your source code independently and then linking them all together, that doesn't happen. So you won't get a function to find, to find in one program, to use it in another, it won't get inlined into the main program. So if this is something that your code is doing, then and you want to compile it with IPO, then again, you want to check to make sure that actually works. So you're going to run the report with the IPO option or IPA and see how that worked out. Um, then there's high level optimizations with minus 03. Um, that's just another, we've already discussed that. So, um, and the odd switch option for that is going to be loop from the reports. So when you're looking to see if, how well the O3 went, the loop is the one that you'll be looking at, sort of focusing on. Uh, again, at the bottom is the link where the source of much of this information is. And another thing to be aware of on, so the clusters, they're fairly homogeneous right now, but they're becoming more heterogeneous, and that means introduction of different types of architectures, and mainly what we have first initially is mostly everything is Broadwell, but there's some Skylake nodes now in the cluster. So when you're compiling your program, you can compile it for the newer architecture and take advantage of the optimizations that are present for a newer architecture if you want to run on that. Um, 
not in all cases is it going to run faster, but for certain type of codes that benefit from uh, large scale vectorization, the Skylake AVX 512 nodes might give you some performance improvement, or if not suited, then you actually might might not on improvement, you could say. It's going to not run as well, nearly as fast. So you need to check that, um, do some tests after you've compiled the code for a certain architecture to make sure that you've sped it up. And if it's not meeting the performance increases that you expected, then you can start checking the reports to see what's gone wrong. Uh, so if you want to know how to get the type of node that you're working on with the GCC compiler, there's a command as shown there, the minus Q option. You can grep the March value. You could get on a cluster right now and do it. And if you're on the login node of Graham, you will get Broadwell. Um, now at the bottom is mentioned that if you submit jobs, you can choose to submit them to Skylake node, in which case if I submitted a job uh, on Cedar, for instance, that's supported, then you would get March uh, to Skylake setting. Um, now Intel compiler has similar settings to choose for code generation. So these options specify are only going to run on the type of node that you specified with this. So it's optimized for that particular type of server. And if you try to run it <coughs> on, if you try to run Skylake optimized on the broad Broadwell node, then it, it will crash. Um, so you can also, there's a, if you don't want to worry about if you, if you happen to know, the, say, a node number range that you're going to run on or a certain server, um, then you don't need to worry about choosing the model of the processor, the CPU type. You can just specify native for GCC March equals native or minus X equals host with the Intel compiler. And that will optimize it for the hardware that you're on. So we've got a um, sort of a typical situation with a program that uh, in its initial state, well, as you, as you try to increase the structure of the program, um, the optimizations uh, fail to, or they, they do not occur initially. So here's, here's the program, which is summing up. Um, a million random doubles, and not to get into the details, but if I want to uh, so if I've got the GCC compiler, if I want to generate a report with the GCC compiler um, with O3, then I apply the fopt info option. And I can concatenate a series of the option values that were discussed in the previous slide. So in this case, I'll output the successfully optimized options for interprocedural optimization or vectorization and vectorization. So all it takes is to run it, and that's it. So it's nothing more complicated than that. And of course, where's the output? All right, so I've run it now with the Intel compiler, just to make sure everything's, and it's generated a optimization report output file by default. And it's called sum1.optreport. And then if you look at this, this would be the sort of the workflow that you would do. And you can check through to see what's been done. 
so so it's successfully inlined uh, call and then it's printed out information about the vectorization that was done and it's successfully vectorized the loop which was mentioned um, it's giving you line numbers in the uh, round brackets so you can check in your code where it was done and it gives you a value here that says estimated potential speed up so that's sort of your reference with um, how well you're doing if you make a change to your code and try to improve maybe add some more optimizations or change the level you want to look for that value to go up so we have a another version of the code oh, I should say that one but um, anyways it's going to re overwrite the previous file and again it's showing the same speed up so there wasn't any improvement with that do is try to Let's turn it down. Yeah, so you'll get the summary information again for this level of optimization. Oh, yes, right, sorry, I was looking at the wrong file. So, so this is the SUM2 version of the program that was run. So the thing is that when it generates, I should just mention so it's clear, when you specify the name of the program that you're that you're running the optimization report on that's being compiled, which in this case is SUM2, the output file name, of course, is named by default. It uses the name of your source file as the prefix. So, so then you can go through the report and determine how it's changed from the previous version of the program and or any changes that you made to the optimization levels. And I'm not going to be interpreting the results given the time. Now I would like to get find out why the GCC didn't work. All right, right. So, okay. So, it's going back to the All right, so this time we solved the problem. So no optimizations, classic case. I didn't load the newer compiler, so it didn't generate any output. So it wasn't in fact, so you can learn from my mistake there. It wasn't in fact that it didn't do anything. It's just that I was only reporting the optimized, um, successfully optimized optimizations of vectors, and none were applied with when using the older or the default version on the cluster of GCC. So by loading a newer version of the module, and I'll put that in the slide and I fix that, that to get the output, you're going to need, in many cases, a newer version. If you want to see some optimization or you suspect it should be there, you need to load a newer version of the GCC compiler. So it's 
it's given it to me. And so that's achieved by going to minus 03. So had I just stuck with the default um, compiler compilation version of 02, or not even, if I didn't put one there at all, that would be assumed, I wouldn't get that vectorized loop. But by putting minus 03, I've got the vectorized loop, and that should translate into a good performance gain of the code when you run it and check it. So, okay, there's four minutes to one. I guess that's the end of the webinar. If there's any questions, now is time.